Standing by the church, which is a 15th century church that was rebuilt in the 19th century, you get a very good impression of the centre of the village. You can see the hills round the village and this is why chalk and cheese is a real formal expression because the hills to the east of the village are chalk and mostly supported sheep and the Blackmore Vale to the west of the village is of course a cattle area. You have three farms within view, you have several sets of thatch cottages mostly built in threes together and you have one of the mills right in front of you, Lower Mill. The three mills in the village really employed most of the people who were not working in the fields and they did provide massive income to the village and uh, local employment and in Doomsday Fontwell was quite a rich village in relative terms in Dorset mainly because of its three mills in, in the village. We're in fact looking at the oldest cottage in the village which is a 15th century cottage. It's a very curious shaped roof and much of it is exactly as it would have been in the 15th century perhaps apart from the windows and the doors. The most extraordinary thing about it is that it is now on a major trunk road and so it's uh, original use where we've got a picture of the cattle slowly wending their way along a rather white chalky road is now replaced by heavy articulated lorries going along the A350. I've just got one or two things that I need to do with you first. One thing is to identify two photographs. This one, which has been catalogued as a, a photograph of Holbrook, cannot possibly be Holbrook. Five years ago we decided that the way to involve people in the village as closely as possible with actually handling the materials was to invite them to come once a month for 90 minute sessions in the village hall. At first we were doing very mundane collecting, cataloguing, looking at the material to see what details we could extract from it. Once we'd done that and got it all on a database on the computer, we were then able to develop ideas and analyse the things more carefully. So we were able to look at the changes that had taken place in the architecture in the village and analyse why it had happened and the materials that were being used and what changes were brought about by economic changes in farming. John, what are you working on? At um, well, I'm working on the archaeology of the parish. I've got the, the map done, the plan done. I've got to go out into the field and measure exactly where some of these strip lynchets are, uh, to be accurate. My name is John Gadd, and with Ian Lawrence, our present chairman, Ian and I started the thing off in about 1988 when we held an exhibition to celebrate the first recorded mention of Fontmore Magna in the Charter of 888. That's a thousand years, well, 1100 years. For me, I'm doing a survey of the archaeology of the village because there are five different civilizations in layers under our feet in this village, and those signs are still there. My name is Carlisle Johnston, I'm known as Carl. I've only lived in Fort Mill Magna for two years, in fact, two years today. So I'm a fairly new member of the Archive Society. I've been looking recently at the church records to see if we could have uh, an interesting article from 1926 onwards. Interesting thing is that there's the Chick family, which is mentioned greatly in, in recent years and re records. In fact, the bungalow we live in was uh, lived in by a, a Chick daughter at one stage. So there's a, there's a sort of continuation and, uh, of uh, interest, really. And uh, I met somebody the other day who... Uh, uh, when I tell them where I lived, they said, oh, yes. Uh, she said to her mother, Uncle Michael used to live there, didn't he? You know? <laughs> so it's quite interesting, really. Gay, what are you up to? I'm hoping to complete the cottage book, 1893, with Jean Foote's help with Bedchester and Hartgrove cottages. My name's Gay Mole, and my husband and I moved into the village in the summer of 2003, and a couple of weeks after that, the Archive Society ran a big exhibition 
and we came along and we were so impressed and interested also um, that I joined on the spot. We moved into the old toll house, which after that became the old police station. Uh, so I wanted to find out more, and along with that, more about the village itself. I've been working on the cottage book, which was compiled in 1893. This manuscript has maps of the village, the cottages are numbered, and then against the numbered cottages are the tenants' names. And then to that I added the information from the 1901 census, giving the names, the ages and their occupations, where I could. And then now, um, to bring it up to date, I've added the names of the cottages as they are now, because I felt that if people were looking into their family history, it would really bring the history alive by being able to go along and stand outside the cottage or even knock on that cottage's door, uh, knowing exactly that it was the right cottage, following through this thread of information that we've been able to put together. Every generation has a duty towards its historical heritage and it can either take a completely romantic fantasy view of it or it can take a, an analytical view in which it tries to discover what the reality of living in the past in the village such as this would be. The getting the balance between the good things that you remember about a village and the harshness of reality in for many people is a delicate balance because you, you don't really want to dwell too much on the horrors of the 19th century but they were there as we've got millions of documents now just saying how grim it really was. The value is to keep a record uh, as far as possible as what has gone on on the daily life of people in this village as far back as we can. Uh, take, for instance, um, estate agents' brochures about houses for sale. Uh, um, one of the members of the society, every time there is a house for sale or to let in the village, goes to the estate agent and says, I'm a member of the society, can I have... I don't want to buy this house, uh, but can I have a copy of your brochure? And we now have over 200, which we started about... Um, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, something like that. But wouldn't it have been interesting to have those of the 1900s and the 1920s? Family history is really such a well-researched and interesting topic. So it's every little bit that you can add brings the history alive for those individuals that are following this thread through. Certainly through our website, we've got so many contacts far and wide, a lot from the States, obviously. And I just feel that with the cottages and the names and the photos now on the website, just brings it so much more alive.